Welcome back to the authority control class. We are starting week two, and we are going to be talking about the concept of controlled vocabularies this week. Um, this first session, we're going to talk about basically what a controlled vocabulary is. Here's a formal definition from a book called Metadata for Digital, Digital Collections. And according to this author, a controlled vocabulary is a standardized list of terms that have been selected for consistent use in describing or indexing information resources. So basically, um, you'll see this is basically the same definition as the authority file concept we talked about last week. And we will continue to talk about a concept like this. But basically, it's making sure that everybody's using the same terms for particular concepts when you do authority control, whether it's for subjects or name authorities for authors or things like that. Um, next, we're going to talk about four different features of uh, control vocabularies and why they work for our purposes for authority control. Um, one feature of control vocabularies is that they provide ambiguity control. This refers to the fact that the same word can mean more than one thing, and if you have items about both of these things in your collection, you're going to want to be able to distinguish between the different uses of the word. For example, mercury could be referring to the planet, it could be referring to the metal, or it could be referring to the Roman god. And so a controlled vocabulary should have a way of dealing with these different concepts. Um, for example, the Library of Congress subject headings, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the second video this week, um, they use parenthetical qualifiers to describe a little bit more thoroughly what they're talking about. A good controlled vocabulary should also provide synonym control. And this deals with the fact that more than one word can represent the same concept. Um, some people, when I'm referring to things that drive down the street, they call them cars. Some people call them automobiles. The control vocabulary needs to uh, decide which term is used and direct a cataloger to use the correct term when they might try and look up the incorrect term. So if the established term is automobiles, then you will be told to use this term for cars and also to use this term instead of autos, for example. A controlled vocabulary also has hierarchical relationships. Uh, this means that there is a use of broader and narrower terms. So if you look up a term, you will sometimes see um, a broader term that it's included in, in case you want to reevaluate and see if your um, subject is really a broader term. And it also has narrower terms. So for example, again, our term automobiles has a broader term of motor vehicles. And for example, among many, I'm sure, narrower terms of antique and classic cars, as well as sports cars. And lastly, a control vocabulary usually has some kind of associative relationships. Um, this is the use of terms that are related in ways other than broader or narrower. So they're not necessarily saying you have to use this um, instead of a particular term, like what we saw with the use for terms, but they're saying if you're looking at something on boats and boating, you might also be interested in using the heading uh, sailing and ships. So cross-references are provided in that way. So those are a few um, characteristics of controlled vocabularies.